Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, this one is shot straight from my van right here. I'm in Ure, Colorado. Oh, oh wait, no, that, that's a lie actually. I'm in Montrose, which is about 40 minutes away from Ure. It's at a bit of a lower elevation. And as you can see, there's like no insulation back there. So it's kind of nice to sleep. Um, it can be as much as like 10 degrees warmer here than in Ure. So <laughs> it is kind of nice. I'm not doing anything today. I'm just taking a little rest. So I um, figured I'd shoot some videos. And my first one I want to talk about, well, the subject of this video is going to be about screamers. So I got two right here. Uh, maybe like some of you guys are wondering what screamers are. So I'll explain what that is. Um, these ones are made by Yates. You can see Yates right there. Um, Yates, I think right now, it's probably the most well-known screamer producing companies out there. They have other stuff too. Um, they make about six different types of screamers. Um, ones that are like more specific for ice climbing, like on ice screws. And then uh, a lot of them are more specific big walling materials. I do remember seeing like at least a couple years ago on Petzl's website, they made a screamer. And then I also heard that Camp makes screamers also, but I didn't see any on Camp's website right now. Maybe they're out. And then the Petzl screamers I haven't seen in like a couple of years. I think they just stopped making them. In my mind, really, you only use these for two different things. One is ice climbing and the other is aid climbing. So if you don't know what a screamer is, basically it's just, it's like a type of a quick draw. So I would clip this onto a piece and then I would clip the rope right here. And then if I were to take a fall, this particular screamer would extend about three times its normal length. It has a very light grade of stitching right here. I believe it's this white stuff. And what happens is that stitching will rip. And then this whole thing, which is folded webbing, you can see it'll extend again, like three feet uh, or three times as long as this thing. This guy's about like eight inches or so. And so we're looking at like extending out to 24 ish inches. If uh, I get all the math right. And um, some of you are thinking, now, well, why would I want to do that? It's just a further fall or when I put an alpine draw there. But uh, the idea with it and what it actually accomplishes is it decreases the force of the load onto whatever piece you're falling on. And so screamers really come into play when you're climbing very marginal or placing really marginal pieces. Now that is, uh, that could be a single marginal piece or it could be a line of marginal pieces. Um, and that's where we sort of get the ice climbing aspect of it, where it's like ice screws. Sometimes you could be a little bit worried when you screw them in, you could feel air pockets um, and that could make you worried. And you know, it's just so much work to take out that ice screw and then find a longer one and screw it in. And you know, you're hanging on that ice tool and you're getting pumped. So uh, having a screamer wouldn't be bad in that case. Um, with aid climbing, uh, well, aid climbing is just full of marginal places, placements. So um, like anytime you get like sort of a sketchy piece and then you aid through it, you can stick a screamer on it and hope that that will help the piece hold in place if you happen to fall on it. Um, if you are doing like a large line of marginal placements, like in aid climbing, you're doing, you know, every two and a half feet, you have to place a new piece and you're just going like micro stopper, micro stopper, micro stopper, all, all in a big row. Then my strategy would be to every three or four pieces throw in a screamer. And that's why my screamer rack reflects that. I have three of these and two of these. Um, these are the ones I usually bring out ice climbing and I only ever really have one for ice climbing and I keep it in my backpack. Usually I uh, just clip quick draws. Um, and then I got these guys for aid climbing. But if I go out on a big aid route, like a, you know, a 200 foot pitch of mostly marginal placements, maybe C3, C3 plus and beyond, then I'll bring these five screamers with me. And then every, you know, five marginal placements or so, I'll stick a screamer on it. So like I said before, Yates, the company makes about six different screamers. Um, the names, I actually have them um, written down right here. Yeah, so it's because they have numbers, you know. So this is the 601 Shorty Screamer. I don't know what the numbers and the names are for, but that's just kind of what they're referred to as on their website if you're going to buy them. And this is the 602 Zipper. 
And, um, and the zipper on the website is going to look different than this. It'll look more like this guy. I think it's red webbing with like a, another yellow casing over it. This is a bit of their sort of older design where it's like you just get this amount of casing. But um, yeah, I think the with what I've seen on their website, it's more of this sort of look only with this length. I also got more stats on these actually. So both of these screamers uh, deploy, that's the term they use, they deploy after you put two kilonewtons of force onto them, which would be, you know, that would be a typical fall right there. It's not really hard to generate two kilonewtons of force in a lead fall. Uh, I haven't like hung on this to test its static strength. I would assume that it would be able to hold my weight since I don't weigh two kilonewtons on my own. And so uh, I assume it wouldn't deploy, but um, these things are like 20 bucks a pop. So I'm only gonna use them when I actually fall on them <laughs> when I'm doing like a sketchy aid climb. So uh, I have yet to actually fall on a screamer and see or feel what it's like having it zip out. But um, sort of the stats they give you on this is that uh, both of these screamers will reduce the force on your piece for up to four kilonewtons. They say on their little sheet, three to four kilonewtons. So when you buy your screamers, definitely take a look at those two forms that they come with. It's not just the usual boilerplate, like, you know, lawsuit dodging uh, writing that they have in there. They actually give you like examples and also sort of recommend when to use which screamer where. For example, if I look back at this, um, they have the standard, the shorty, and the zipper. Uh, those are all pretty much kind of can be used throughout the spectrum, ice climbing, aid climbing. They reduce the force for three to four kilonewtons, with the exception of the zipper, since that is a bit longer of a piece. That's actually six to eight kilonewtons. I'm just looking at it, the form right now. And so the zipper can reduce the force on your piece a little bit more than a shorty. And that's kind of where it's nice to have maybe two different types like I do, so that way I can place a shorty and then a zipper and alternate. Or if I have a slightly less marginal piece than the other marginal piece, you know, you can sort of swap and trade, but I wouldn't go down the rabbit hole any further than that of like, oh, this piece is like a good zipper piece and this is a good shorty piece. Like at the end of the day, they're all screamers and they all reduce the force. So that's kind of what we're getting at. Uh, moving on to the other two, there is the ice cream, which also deploys at two kilonewtons and will reduce the force another, that's the same as the other guys, three to four kilonewtons. But this one has an interesting design where the screamer itself goes on the tube of the ice screw. And so that way, if you take a long screw, like a 19 centimeter and drill it in and hit rock underneath the ice or whatever, then you can just slide the screamer along the tube and then you don't get the levering action, which you would get if you clipped a carabiner onto the hanger. So that's actually kind of a cool design. I got to give them credit for that one. And then the other screamer is called a Scream Aid or Scream Aids. And they even write it, like every place I've seen this in text, they write it right underneath as used in extremely marginal aid placements only. So it's like, they're really particular about this one. And uh, the reason why is it deploys at 1.5 kilonewtons and will, it's same as they say, reduce the fall factor about three to four kilonewtons. It's, it's a bit smaller. It's kind of like a cross between a zipper and a shorty. Um, so that would be like you know, body weight only placements, copper heads, uh, some micro nuts, any of that stuff that everyone hates clipping. But that would just be a specific aid screamer. Very, very specific. Probably wouldn't bring it out with me unless I was on like A4, C4, something like that, which I don't really climb that or try not to. <laughs> Another thing that's worth mentioning about the Scream Aid is its runner strength, the overall kilonewton runner strength is only six kilonewtons, which means that, I mean, if you take a big fall on it, it's gonna just rip apart. And uh, well, I mean, if you get above six kilonewtons on the pieces that you're supposed to place it on, then you're gonna rip the piece apart too. So uh, it's actually really hard to generate a fall that's at the force of six kilonewtons. Um, so it's strong for what it needs to be. All the other screamers, their full expanded runner strength is 24 kilonewtons, same as like any sling or any quick draw out there pretty much. So yeah, like I said, these are, in my world, I only really use them ice climbing or aid climbing. Um, but that being said, I only really bring, like I, I only bring one with me because I don't expect to use it. Maybe if I had beta beforehand, like I know that a route's really 
shallow or something of that nature, then I would bring one or two. Um, most of the time I bring one and I, it just stays in my backpack. I have seen people get a little carried away with these. Maybe at the ice park they'll uh, place like, I've seen uh, some people place a screamer on every screw that they place. And that's a little excessive, I would say. And maybe if you're doing like three screws in a 60 meter pitch. <laughs> but uh, I mean, generally if you're doing that, you're super confident anyway. But uh, placing one screamer on every screw, it makes sense from a logic standpoint. It's like, well, if I fall on this one, I want the added benefit of uh, reducing my force. But um, yeah, it's more of like knowing your limits and just placing this on specific screws or specific pieces of protection. Aid climbers usually only carry like one or two of these. Uh, and then again, it just depends on the route. If you're doing a full route of number one copperheads, then maybe you'll bring more. But um, that you can just, that'll be all in the beta for the route. And then you'll know how many you need when you get to that point anyway. They come with a couple different forms right here. So that way you can look at all the stats of the screamer. Um, I, I took a look at this and read it just now. And they even give you examples. Actually, that, that's kind of cool. They see right here, there are examples. This may be on their website. I uh, haven't looked too hard, but uh, it'll come with any of the screamers, I think, if you, uh, if you order from their website. They have examples, one through four different examples here. And uh, the first one is like ice climbing. The second one is rock climbing. Then the next two are aid climbing. And, uh, and then this chart on top also, which sort of, I mean, you can pause the video and take a look at it, but it's pretty much just talking about your fall factors, how much rope is in the system to make the fall factor, as well as the fall distance, impact force to the climber. So in the mathematical fall factor formula, how much force the climber may feel when they fall, um, and then impact force without the screamer, and then impact force with the screamer so the impact force without the screamer is nine kilonewtons and then they say the impact force with the screamer is six kilonewtons it may all be true but i do want to keep you guys aware that this is kind of like they're just examples you know and they're using specific things like an ice climber that weighs 80 kilograms uh, which is they have it translated 175 pounds that's the av that's the actual test weight for uiaa uh, certifications is you have to drop an 80 kilogram mass on like 10 feet of rope with like a certain amount dropped from 10 feet above the anchor and the rope has to be bent over a like three inch tube it's like I don't really know uh, all the specific details but the reason why they chose the 80 kilogram mass for the example is because of that uh, that testing unit which is based off of kind of the average weight of a an adult male so uh, just keep in mind that when they write these examples out, they're using the mathematical formula and it's not accounting for outside factors. Like for example, if you don't weigh 170 pounds or if, uh, if for the rock climbing examples, you know, the rope is gonna be running over the rock, which adds a significant amount of friction in the force of a fall. Now it may not be doing that all the time, but it, it, could, be, uh, it could be the case in this fall. And so that is just something to keep in mind like these are sort of just examples to outline what the screamers are capable of. Especially in the aid placements when they talk about a number one RP that's rated to 3.6 kilonewtons, and then your fall is gonna generate five kilonewtons, but then you add in the screamer, which reduces that to a two kilonewton fall, which would then be within the strength rating of that stopper. And there's just so many other factors in there that could cause that to be a placement that holds your fall in the first place. Um, but they, they just are doing these for examples of where the screamers could come in handy and to help give you an idea of when to use the specific screamer and then like uh, what it can do for that placement if it's marginal. So it's like not set in stone, but they are fun to read. I think, uh, I think they did a really good job with it. I just wanted to sort of remind you all of that. All right, well, I should probably stop this video before it gets too long of me just sitting in this van and uh, talking to you guys. But yeah, bottom line, screamers, I like them for aid climbing and ice climbing. Um, they're worth having at least one if you're really into either of those things. It's there on the rack, <laughs> so I got it if I want it. Um, 
thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, I've been doing a lot of ice climbing videos, obviously, uh, because it is ice climbing season, but I assure you that I'll get back into my normal, like, rock stuff and uh, whatever else I do. If you want me to make an instructional video um, about any topic, guarding, climbing, or whatever, camping, snowshoeing, I mean, I'll do a snowshoeing video, uh, then just leave a comment. And uh, if you want to go out climbing with me, uh, my schedule is starting to book up for the summer. So um, now is kind of the time to uh, get in touch and then let's go out and do some climbing, alpine or rock or uh, that's it. Or we could go snowshoeing actually, I'll do some guided snowshoeing. That doesn't sound too hard on the body. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.